After suffering the worst loss by a Broncos team in over a decade, owner and CEO Greg Penner announced the organization had parted ways with head coach Nathaniel Hackett. Coming up on Broncos A to Z, Zach reacts to the dismissals that took place on Monday, shares his biggest takeaways from the joint press conference with Penner and general manager George Payton, and gives us some insight into what we might expect in the coming weeks and months here in Broncos country. Broncos A to Z starts right now. Inside the Broncos Media Center for Broncos A to Z, everyone. I'm Alexis Perry alongside Zach Stevens. On Christmas Day, the Denver Broncos were embarrassed on a national stage as the LA Rams scored on eight of their nine possessions, racked up 51 points, and picked off Russell Wilson three times before Brett Rippon made a relief appearance. Nathaniel Hackett took to the podium after the Broncos' 11th loss of the season and said everyone was frustrated with losing. With a desire to restore this franchise's winning tradition at the forefront of their minds, the Walton Penner Family Ownership Group determined it was best to move on from Hackett and begin the search for a new head coach immediately. I'm sorry to the fans. I, I, you know, I think the frustration, obviously, of a number of losing seasons is high, but I think this season it's even higher because of the expectations that we had going in. Uh, we felt like we had a lot of pieces in place to have a very successful season. I know the players in this in this building are uh, we've got good players, and uh, we didn't put the pieces together. And um, our fans have been patient. I think we've got the best fans in the world, but uh, but we need to put a better product on the field. I think this is uh, we have a lot to offer here, and it starts with ownership and the resources they're going to put in to, to, to bring us back a championship. They're going to give us everything we need, uh, this ownership group, Greg, Kerry, Rob Walton. And then, you know, it's just an iconic organization. It's an easy sell, the fan base and, and the winning tradition. That's an easy sell. And then, uh, you know, I can, I can sell this roster. You know, with a bunch of good uh, young players, I think uh, we have a long way to go. Uh, we, have some, we have some good veteran players as well. Um, you know, we just... Uh, you know, I think we have a foundation in place where, you know, if we get the right head coach, we make some sound moves on the personnel end that, uh, you know, we can turn this thing around. You know, I'm a big believer that if, if you've got, if you start with the right culture, people, and you have the resources and expectations, uh, we, can, we can build a winning football team here again. And I don't think that takes a number of years. Uh, our focus should be on... Uh, turning this around so that we're ready to go this coming season with the right pieces in place. Zach, throughout the first 15 weeks of the season, there have been several times when media and fans alike have questioned Coach Hackett at the helm. But what was it about this Week 16 loss to the Rams that you think contributed to them finally making this decision? Well, Greg Penner and George Payton made it very clear on Tuesday, 24 hours after moving on from Nathaniel Hackett, that Sunday was embarrassing and unacceptable. They did not think that they were going to be making this move with two weeks left into the season. Would have liked to make the decision after having a full season, but after losing by 37 points on the field and then there were off the field issues as well Dalton Reisner and Brett Rippon getting into it on the sideline then Randy Gregory suspended for a game because of his actions after the game both of those were added to the embarrassment Alexis uh, of that game so that's why it happened now well defensive coordinator Ejero Evero was the Broncos first choice for interim head coach but he chose to stay in his role therefore senior assistant coach Jerry Rosberg has accepted the role for these final two games so what factors might have played into the decision for Coach E to stay put, and what does Coach Rosberg bring to this position? Well, Coach Evero wanted to stay with the defense and continue to do what he has been doing this first year. Remember, this is his first year as a defensive coordinator, and he felt like he owed it to the defensive guys to stay there. And with only two games left, Coach E wasn't really going to be able to show if he was a great head coach or not, especially with two great tough games coming up for the Broncos in these final two games. And so that's why he decided to stay with the defense. But the Denver Broncos still do want to interview him. George Payton made that very clear on Tuesday, saying that they want to interview him after the season to be their next head coach, potentially. And with Coach Rosberg, what you can expect from him is he's been an assistant head coach with John Harbaugh and the Baltimore Ravens for many years before joining the Denver Broncos. So you can expect a guy who's going to really be able to command the room and be able to guide these teams through the final two weeks of the season. Well, in addition to Coach Hackett's departure on Monday, we also learned that special teams coordinator Dwayne Stoops, as well as offensive line coach Butch Berry, were dismissed as well. Why do you think that move was made? 
obviously with two weeks left in this season. Well, those were two of the units that needed the most help. And when you look at special teams, they have in multiple categories, they're in the bottom of the league. They needed help there. And it just management didn't feel like those guys were responding. The players were responding to Dwayne Stukes in the final two weeks of the season. And then the offensive line, there has been a ton of injuries there, but it's been a group that has really struggled. These were both moves that were widely expected to happen at some point. They wanted to have it, make those happen now to see what the team can do in the final two weeks with, with new direction there. Well, of course, many changes are on the horizon here for the Denver Broncos. And as of the taping of the show, really Coach E is the only one that we know that the Broncos do plan on interviewing for this position. But when thinking about potential candidates, what sticks out? What do you think the Broncos should really be focused on this time mm -hmm. around? Well, when we talked to George Payton and Greg Penner, one of the things they said was culture and leadership. That's, those are two things they're looking for. They don't need experience, as George Payton and Greg Penner made clear on Tuesday, but I think that's going to be something that they really look for because, look, we're less than a year after they hired Nathaniel Hackett, a first-time head coach, and they already moved on from him. I imagine experience is going to be very important here. Last year, the Denver Broncos interviewed 10 candidates. Only one was a previous head coach. I expect that to almost be flipped this year where the majority of candidates they look at have that experience. And also something else that's very interesting. Russell Wilson needs to be fixed. That's going to be part of this job of the new head coach, but they're also going to want to make sure that he's looking at special teams, fixing that defense, keeping them great, which they're, they're happy of where the group is now, and then working on offense. This is not just a coach for Russell Wilson, and boy, did ownership make that very clear on Tuesday. In addition to Coach E, any other potential candidates that you hope the Broncos interview? Well, there's some very big names out there. Sean Payton may be the biggest name. I think Jim Harbaugh is a very interesting name as well. And then you can look at other experienced guys. Leslie Frazier, defensive coordinator for the Bills. Guys like that with experience. And the one that sticks out to me right now, Jim Harbaugh. His brother we've already talked about in this show. Jim Harbaugh is a guy that's had so much success anywhere he's gone. Stanford, a lot of success. Uh, then when he went to the NFL, a lot of success. A short four-year stint with the 49ers, but a lot of success there. And then obviously he has Michigan in back-to-back -back college playoff football. Okay, well obviously this season has not unfolded the way that anybody would have expected it to here at the beginning of the year. In addition to coaching, from what we saw from Nathaniel Hackett, what other factors do you think have really played into this disappointing season that we've seen throughout 2022? Injuries is up there, of course. And I really like what the management said on Tuesday after moving on from Hackett. They said, we're already looking into that. Greg Penner and Kerry Walton Penner have already reached out to the NFL, talked to doctors in the NFL, and tried to understand what's going wrong with their process in order to make sure that this team can stay healthier moving forward because that's been a huge issue for the team. And then also, there's been so many backups playing. It takes a lot of time, and this has been a new system on offense, and that has really hurt the team as well. All right, well, knowing this team, these men play with a lot of heart, and they will continue to battle throughout these final two games of the season against a pair of division rivals starting with the Chiefs this Sunday. So, Zach, what could you foresee the message being to the team throughout these final two weeks? Well, typically leading up to this point, when you still have your head coach, but he's clearly on a hot seat, the message is let's fight for the coaches. Now that Nathaniel Hackett is no longer here and some other coaches are no longer here, it kind of turns to a, a personal message. One, pride. Let's, let's end this season strong, play with pride. The Broncos don't have a division win yet, and their final two opponents are both in the AFC West. So break the streak against the Chiefs. That's going to be a big rallying cry. And then try to ruin the Chargers' chances of getting a better playoff spot. Both teams are now officially in the playoffs going into the final two weeks. So then you have those two things to play from a team perspective, but then it turns to an individual perspective as well, because Coaches are now gone. George Payton made it very clear that he has not made the moves necessary to be a winning team on the personnel side, player-wise. So players are now fighting for their jobs, not just for the Denver Broncos, but also to put film on for other teams in the NFL once free agency comes around. Well, as for the more distant future of this team, what do you expect the next few months to really look like here in Broncos country? As, like I said, this coaching search begins, but other changes need to be made as well. Yeah, I expect a lot of changes. First, get the head coach in, then he's going going to build his staff. One of the things Greg Penner made very clear, Alexis, was he's going to have, the new coach is going to have every resource at his disposal. And we know the Broncos have a lot of resources under this new ownership group. So they're going to be able to do whatever they want when it comes to coaching. And that is huge to give the new head coach everything he needs. And he is going to report directly to Greg Penner, which is interesting. It's different than the way it was set up where Nathaniel Hackett reported to George Payton, who then reported to Greg Penner. 
It's going to be different now. So the new head coach is going to have a lot of power. I wouldn't be surprised if then he adds uh, things to the personnel side to, to help George Payton. Okay, well, that is all the time we have for Broncos A to Z. But be sure to keep checking back to the Broncos digital channels throughout the week for all the latest news out of Dove Valley. And, of course, be sure to join me, Steve Atwater, and Orlando Franklin this Friday at 5 o'clock as we preview the Broncos' New Year's Day game against the Kansas City Chiefs. For Zach Stevens, I'm Alexis Perry. Thanks so much for watching.